Hey everybody, Rich here. I'm just going to do some little tricks here. Not tricks really, but you'll see what I mean. Stuff in GIMP. So you can make some quick logos. They'll look kind of cool, depending on your point of view, I guess. This is GIMP version 2.6.11, which is the latest at the time I record this. Uh, GIMP is free. It is available at gimp.org. Runs in Mac, Windows, or Linux. So whatever you're using, you can use GIMP. And even if you have no artistic talent whatsoever, anyone can make a text logo. Text is text. So maybe you want to make something for a business card or a sign or website, email signature, whatever. Gamer tag, I don't know. You could use it, uh, create it with GIMP. So this is just a very, there are a million different ways to do images in GIMP, obviously, because it is a full-fledged image manipulation thing so this is just one example this is not like the way to do it. it's just one of many ways so anyway I'll do a new image here and uh, because I want it to look cool I'm going to make the background black now the background color here uh, if you look at the swatches over here white is a foreground and black is a background so I'm going to make it the background color but let's just say you made a goof and you made it white by mistake. Oops, so it's white. What do you do? Well, I'll use the fill bucket. There's a bucket right here. Click the bucket and swap or just click this swatch and ordinarily it's like this. I suggest using the fifth one because it's easiest. Just choose a black. Try that again. Choose a black <laughs> and then click. Now it's black. And then change it back to white. So we're good to go there. I'm just going to plop some text on here and I'm going to put a couple of layers and motion blur it and you'll see what I mean. Um, it's just one of many ways we sh you can do stuff in GIMP. So I'm going to click the text tool by clicking the text tool, which is the letter A icon here. Now ordinarily the font is uh, sans at 18 pixels, so I'll make it as if you were doing this for the first time and I click in here make sure that the uh, foreground is actually white or else if it's black you're not going to see the text so we click in here and the little GIMP text editor appears and I'm just going to type the word uh, terminal like for computer terminal you know kind of thing so uh, the first thing is that it's a little small so I'm going to uh, bump the size up here and change the font and you can change the font in two ways you can click the little AA button here and select it like this if you have a lot of fonts on your computer, such as I do, uh, it's actually easier to click in here and just type the name of the font you want. So I have a uh, font called Press Start and Press Start K, which is kind of a Nintendo style font for those that remember the old NES. It's a very computery looking thing. And uh, if you go onto Google and search for Press Start font, it's a free font. You can download it now if you want. So I will just, and then for the size, it's 18, so I want to bump that up. Now you can either highlight and type in a value, whatever, or you can just use the little up and down there. It's probably easier if you just use the up and down. Now for this uh, specific thing, I do not want them anti-alias. That, that's uh, smoothing the, em uh, the edges, so I'll get rid of that. I want it very, very blocky, very computery looking. So we'll pump this up to about oh, 70. And then I will click the alignment tool and then click the text. And then this one, this one. So it makes it dead center. Now it's a little big, but that's only because the letters are kind of spaced out wide. So I will double click. Now there's two layers here. There's the background and the text layer we just made. So to re-edit the text layer, I'll just double click it. The little uh, text editor window appears again and I can adjust the size. But I don't want to adjust the size yet. I'm actually going to go down here and I'm going to use the uh, adjusting the letter spacing, which of the three is the third one. And then you notice how the letters are getting closer together. Alright, the R and the M are kind of fighting each other there so maybe I have to keep it stuck. Okay, well I can't put them together so I'll just make the text size smaller. I'll put it down to uh, 60 and then click the alignment tool again. Click the text center center. Yeah, that's about right. So we'll just use that. 
Okay, now what I'm going to do is um, put some borders around it. I'm going to do uh, two borders here. I'm going to do one with a motion blur, and I'm going to do a second one, which is just kind of a, a soft glow. So uh, the way to put a border around text, uh, you have to have the text layer highlighted, and then just go to Layer, Transparency, Alpha 2 Selection, which is a red one, so oops, lost it there, which is easy to spot. And you'll notice that there's a animation going around, which means it is selected. And then I'm going to click Select and Grow, which will grow the selection out from its current point. Um, let's see, Grow Selection by 8 pixels. Yeah, that's about right. You don't want to go too much here, so we'll, we'll try 8. Yeah, that's about right. Now notice that the selection grew. That's exactly what it did. That's what it was supposed to do. Now we don't go and fill this because if we do, we just we lose everything. So we don't want to do that. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually make a new layer here. So in the uh, second panel here, I'll click the there's one, two, three, four, five, six buttons here. The first one, which is a little paper, and it makes a new layer. So I'll call this uh, border one. Actually, I'll call this one motion blur because that's what I'm going to do. Make sure it's transparent hit OK. And then I actually have to move this layer down below this one because if I don't it will uh, go over it. Like for example here, if, if I actually uh, fill this in, see that's what happens and we don't want that so we actually have to put it down. So I click this one and there's a little down arrow right here so I'll put it below. And the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to do this with the, uh, the blend tool which is right next to the paint bucket so I'll click this one and uh, now you can, if you use the paint bucket, you can use regular um, straight flat color, but I want something with you know more gradient, more just more flare, if you will, to it. And the cool thing in GIMP is that you click this little when you click the blend tool and you click the gradient swatches, all these different color combinations. Now by default, it's on foreground to background, but I want something you know, different. So I'll go down, I had a green one I selected, uh, I believe I had that one selected, let's see if I can refine that, yeah, greens. So I'll use greens. Now, the way that the blend tool works is that it's not like the bucket where you just click and it fills. You actually take your mouse, pick a starting point, click and hold with the left mouse button, then drag to where you want it to end. So I'm going to make a uh, diagonal-ish gradient from bottom left to top right. Now you can choose what type of shape you want it to be, whether linear, radial, whatever. If you're unsure of what to do, linear, <laughs> just stick with that one. So, I'll, And it doesn't matter if you're inside the border or not, so I'll just click down here and you notice it's a line I'm clicking and holding and go to top right and let go. Okay, so now it filled it with this swatch in a diagonal-like fashion. Okay. So now at this point what I want to do is motion blur all this. So I click the layer, select all. Okay, so it does the whole thing and not just what was inside. That's the reason you do that. And then filter, blur, motion blur. Again, make sure you have that layer selected. That's going to show what's going to happen. Uh, you'll know th the reason it's only showing the green is because that is all that's on that layer, and I do a radial blur of uh, an angle of 20. <clears throat> I already had that selected from before, that's why it's already filled in, and hit OK. Now, motion blur is not instant; it does take a second or two to render. So you can see the uh, green progress bar here. It is in fact rendering right now. So we'll just give it a second there to clean up. Or render, excuse me. Okay, there it is. Now it's got some motion blur to it. It's in a radial fashion, which means, you know, circular, or whatever. Um, okay, so now the final thing that I'm going to do here is give this uh, font just a light gold glow to it, kind of amberish. So I'm actually going to go back to the terminal layer here and uh, let's see here, do I double click? No, I don't have to double click it. And then I should be able to do an alpha to selection again. Transparency. Yep. So now the uh, it's I selected the uh, the text layer. 
alpha to selection so it's just that. I'm going to grow it again. Select and grow. This one I'm going to do a little shorter. I'm going to only do it about uh, 5 pixels. Yeah, that's about right. And it grew. And I'm going to do another layer. So hit the paper again. And I'll call this uh, gold. If I could type it. Glow. Make it transparent. And I will move this below the uh, font so it shows up proper. It doesn't go over the font. So down once. Above the motion. Below the font as such. And this one I'm actually going to fill it with a straight color. No gradients or anything like that. So I click the bucket and click this and uh, the uh, foreground color swatch and I'm going to do just stark yellow. So I I had uh, clicked the fifth one over here and just do stark yellow, canary yellow, whatever that's called. And then just go inside and click. So now it is, um, it's really bright, but I'll fix that in a moment. So it, it's filled and that's what I want it to do. Now on the same layer, gold glow, which I just made, select all. And I'm going to blur this. So I will do, yeah, I'll do a Gaussian blur. I don't know if that's pronounced Gaussian or Gaussian. If anyone wants to correct me, I've always pronounced it Gaussian. Eh, maybe it's wrong. I don't know. So this one, I don't want too much of a blur on it. I just want it to kind of be glowish. So let me try just five. All right, that's not enough. So let's try 10. Almost there. Let's try 15. Yeah, that's about right. Um, this blur happens real quick. Okay, so that's a blur, but it's a little too bright. So I'm going to take this layer and just adjust the opacity down. And to about, let's do 50. I'm going to put in a direct value of 50 in here. There we go. Now I actually could stand to go down just a little more. Let's try 45. Oh, go even lower. Let's try 40. Nope, 45 was better. At least in my eyes. Okay, so now at this point I have to get rid of all this uh, space around it. Now the way I do this is I just uh, flatten all the layers so I have one layer and then do a fuzzy select. Well, I'll just show you. It's easy. So uh, what I'm going to do is combine all the layers into one here. And the way to do that is with uh, image, flatten image. As it says here, merge all layers into one and remove transparency. You do remove transparency when you do this, but I had intended this on being on a black background anyway, so it's not a big deal. So flatten image. You'll notice that all the layers that were there have now been combined into a single background layer. There's always one layer, just to let you know, there's always one. Okay, so now at this point, I'm going to use the fuzzy select tool, which is up here. It's a little wand. And um, when doing an image like this that has really slight uh, motion blur on it, I don't want any threshold, so I set that to zero. If you don't set it to zero, it might cut off some of the uh, some of the blur, so I make sure it's zero. And um, I also turn off anti-aliasing, so I uncheck that and I make it a zero. And then I just go far away from the main image here into a part that's all black and click this. So now it's selected the outside. So what I want to do is invert that selection. So I do a select and an invert. So now it's just this and then image crop to selection and then select none. Okay, it's looking cool. But what I want to do is put a little black around it, make it just a little bigger. So for that I'm going to do an image and uh, canvas size. So with this it's a 44 by 146 image. I'm going to put this uh, to 500. Now being that these are locked, that's what this is, that means it will auto adjust the height as well. So I'll do 500 and click down one, 151 and then click center and then for resize layer I'll do all layers resize. Now I'm going to undo that just so you can see. Watch what happens here. You see that? I'll redo it again. Just added enough 
so it looks cool. It has the black around it like I wanted it to. Now at this point all I have to do is save it. Now if you're doing an image that has um, very color intensive gradient like this, JPEG will not do because JPEGs, uh, they have image artifacts in them. The best one to use for maximum uh, compatibility, so to speak, is to use a ping, a PNG, Portable Network Graphic File. So I'll do a file, save as. Now it will by default dump you into the pictures folder, which is fine because that's easy to locate in your hard drive. I'll just call it terminal.png. You do not have to go to this uh, menu here and actually fish out PNG because there's, you know, there's tons and tons of choices here. So if you just type .png at the end of the file name, it will automatically, uh, GIMP will assume you mean portable network graphic. If you typed JPG, it assumes the JPEG format. So that's the cool part about the uh, about GIMP. And then I'll just terminal.png and then save. And it gives me options that are PNG specific. So you know it's saying save as PNG. It knows that's what you want. And then from here you can just hit save and it will save the file and you're done. So that's just uh, one of a billion different ways that you could do a logo in the, uh, in the GIMP program. I mean, I'm not saying that this looks awesome or, or anything like that, but you know, it looks better than just straight text. Now from here, uh, if I wanted to make this into something like, say, an email signature, and it's too big for email, so I, I could just go image and scale image and then size it down to something, um, I guess you could call it tolerable for email. So instead of having 500 pixels wide, we'll do like 150 pixels, you know, something real small, 150 pixel wide and scale. And now it's like this. Now it doesn't look as good as it did when it was huge, but it's suitable for email. If I wanted, I'll undo that. I'll do a 200 instead. You can experiment around to see which one you like the best for the size. So I'll do a 200 wide. And it, like I said, it auto, since they're locked, it auto adjust. Small side note here. If I wanted to not have these figures locked for whatever, I can just click this. You notice that the chain link is broken. You generally do not want to do that. You want to keep it locked so that it crops proper. I'm sorry, scales proper. And then scale. Yeah, 200. This wouldn't look too bad in an email signature. So just one of many ways to do a logo in GIMP with text with no talent whatsoever, just using filters and crap. <laughs>